We seem to be experiencing AI stagnation. Let's talk about it. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome back to AI Insights and Innovation. I'm your host, Dave Linthicum, author, speaker, B-List Geek, longtime AI architect, and here to talk to you today about the realities of AI and using AI for your enterprise. Let's get started. So I decided to do this one because I'm seeing some uh, signs in the market right now that we could be going through some stagnation. I was, even called it stagflation, but evidently that has its own meaning. So we call it AI stag stagnation. And it's really a discrepancy between the significant investments that are being made in AI technology, certainly on the technology provider side, cloud providers, large enterprise providers, everybody's investing in generative AI and AI in general, and the ability for the enterprises in their ability to be prepared to consume the technology. And there seems to be an impedance mismatch uh, between the two. And there's probably some good reasons for that. So slow adoption by the enterprises out there, and I'm hearing this by the technology enterprises that have all this great uh, generative AI and AI technology they're ready to sell in the marketplace. They're not seeing the uptake uh, that they thought they would be seeing at the end of 2024. I, I do think this is going to be a temporary thing. I think when we get into 2025, uh, probably uh, latter half of the winter, uh, that we are going to see a bit more of a uh, of a shoot up in terms of the ability for these enterprises to consume uh, more AI technology. But lots of things has have to occur in order for that to happen. And let's talk about what those are. So the biggest impediment that enterprises are finding in their ability to consume AI technology is their lack of talent. There's a huge talent gap out there, whether it's AI engineering ta talent, uh, data scientists, AI ethicists, uh, AI infrastructure engineers. There's just a bunch of complex things that have to take place in order for you to build and deploy these AI systems successfully, more so than traditional applications, and they just don't have the talent they need to number one, get things done now, or even hire the teams that they need to get things done. And they don't see enough talent on the marketplace to hire. So they're putting them their AI desires into a holding pattern until they view the industry's ability to correct those things right now. And so that's why you're seeing the stagnation uh, that's occurring. So a survey finds that over 80% of IT managers report a skills shortage up from 72% last year. That's a fairly uh, slow growth, but it's interesting to see that that's not diminishing. It should be diminishing at this point. There's lots of AI training out there. I drive some of it, uh, and we should have enough talent in the marketplace to fulfill their needs. But for whatever reason, people aren't taking the classes. We don't have enough people who are desiring to get into an AI career path. Not enough people use in traditional technology career paths are, are transferring over to AI. So we just don't have the talent we need to build these things. So the areas impacted by that would be generative AI, large language model development, data science, things that the enterprises want to deal with today. And it the consequence would be difficulty in leveraging advancements. And this is stifling uh, progress and innovation. So the enterprises are telling me this across the board with very few exceptions. They can't find the talent they need to be successful with AI, and so therefore they're not going to consume the AI technology from the AI technology providers until they have the talent they need to prep them to be successful with this technology. You have to keep in mind that this stuff is expensive. It's gonna cost three to five times that of a traditional system to build and operate these things. And so that being the case, they understand that there's going to be a significant investment needs to be made, and they're trying to optimize that investment. So they're not going to make that investment until they're relatively uh, sure that they're going to be successful. And as you saw, we talked about this before, uh, lots of uh, failed AI projects out there. They see that in the uh, in, in the news, probably this show. Um, also, we're seeing a lack of understanding in terms of the use cases they should be identifying for the proper you know, usage to get the maximum business value out of generative AI. All this is just leading them to say, okay, we're going to hold uh, for now until a lot of these things get fixed, which I, I can understand why they're making those decisions. So, and there's some interesting complexities that are uh, coming off of this uh, you know, kind of odd market dynamic as well. Uh, high salaries and, and competition. The acute shortage leads to escalating AI salaries for AI specialists. And also, I think many organizations that are hiring people probably for more than they should get paid 
that aren't necessarily qualified for the jobs. So they don't have people in the organization. They're able to vet them. So they end up hiring architects, data scientists, data uh, AI engineers that don't have the skills they need to be successful in assisting them to build their first generations of generative AI systems. Uh, and so that's kind of a, uh, a problem because they don't have the skills to hire the people they need to be successful with AI, and they're unable to get the skills <laughs> until they're able to hire people. So I guess there's lots of uh, ways in which you can work around that, certainly using consultants and uh, you know those sorts of things. But it's frustrating for the enterprises that just want to use their existing models in hiring talent uh, as they did in the traditional world of cloud computing and uh, centralized computing, distributed computing, client server and service oriented architecture of years gone by uh, and doing the same thing with AI. And it just doesn't seem to be working. So the expectations are awarding, re, uh, eroding confidence and lead to market, you know, reevaluation of the ambitions of the AI ventures, as we talked about. So the enterprises are just putting their AI plans into a holding pattern, which is where the stagnation occurs. So what are the long-term uh, implications of this? Well, the negative cycle uh, alt will and delayed implications and rising uh, pressure on providers can create a delusionment in the market right now. There may be some uh, misunderstandings, I think, in terms of the success of the market uh, longer term. Uh, I don't think that's really going to have much to do with it. I think this is a short-term phenomenon you know, meeting six months, nine months, something like that at the most. And it's going to be a hiccup that we're going to look back and really kind of understood why it happened. And by the way, we've been here before. Uh, I've been in the AI space since the 80s, and the AI was was popular then and kind of went away and became popular again and kind of went away and became popular again as people, you know, got into the delusionment of the technology, understanding the expenses. Uh, and so we had AI winters and things like that. So AI has been around for a long time. And now we're back in the middle of it, but we're back with a technology that the enterprises view as having a tremendous amount of value, which is the generative AI technology. So it'll be interesting to see the way the market reacts to this, because there's a lot on the line for many businesses. There's going to be a lot of businesses that are, if they're un unable to leverage this technology as a true force multiplier and differentiator for their business, uh, they may end up going away because their competitors are going to be able to do that. They're going to beat them in their own marketplace. So what are the recommended actions? Well, for technology providers, uh, they should collaborate with educational institutions to develop targeted AI training programs. Uh, I tell them this all the time, it just never occurs. Um, maybe I sh you know, sh should give up on it. If the supply chain for their talent is going to have a genesis in the state and local colleges and universities, then invest there. Uh, so in other words, they're getting some funding on hiring the right instructors to build the talent they need uh, to build the AI professionals they need to build their AI systems. Of course, that's not going to be instantaneous. You can't turn that on like a tap. That's going to take a while to get through. Um, but the investments, I think, made in those ways are going to bring forth a lot of value. So I urge enterprises to look at that. Create user-friendly tools for easy AI integration um, and form strategic alliances with the universities to foster innovation, tailor AI offerings to, uh, to showcase immediate sector-specific values through case studies. In other words, focus on and sharing information about what's working within AI within an enterprise space and within a vertical space. Why should we uh, use the technology and what kind of business value can we really expect? And by the way, getting at the business value that's going to work and not work. Uh, this is never going to be always good news. This is going to be good news and bad news. And you have to consider one versus the other. For enterprises, they should build internal training programs to upskill staff and attract diverse talent, uh, very much like uh, the technology providers. In essence, they're uh, achieving the same goals. Encourage a culture of experimentation with AI technology. In other words, get people the tools and the time they need to experiment with the technology, become better with the technology over time. Lots of enterprises are frustrated because they don't have the AI talent, yet they're unable to buy the tools, fund the time uh, to get their staff and to get their personnel uh, better at AI by playing with the technology, which I think is going to be foundational to getting a lot of this stuff right. Implement pilot projects to assess the benefits and challenges and then invest in data management to prepare for an effective AI utilization. We talked about the data wall here, 
the data has to be prepared. And if you're not going to do AI now, uh, this would be a good time to get your data uh, in a bunch more better state. And finally, uh, AI initiatives with clear business goals, create your strategies, um, figure out what you're, what you're going to do, what are the systems you're going to build. So if you're not moving forward with an AI building strategy at this, this particular time, get your data right, get your strategy right, get your talent right. So take the time to build an infrastructure and an environment that's going to uh, enable you to be successful with this technology. It's going to be very important. There's going to be lots of moving parts to it, very complex, very expensive to move this stuff. And it's going to be more work and time to build these AI systems. So prepare yourself for it, which I think is going to be fine. It's a fine use of the time if you are going to be stagnated uh, and not building AI, then uh, prepare yourself for success when you are not stagnated. So the call to action is pretty simple. Um, both technology providers and enterprises, people who are trying to sell the technology and people who are looking to consume the technology to build, build their systems, need to proactively address the talent gap and enhance collaboration on becoming better at AI. This is not one side sits on, on the field and the other side sits on the other side of the field staring at each other, waiting for the other to make a move. This is actively working together uh, making the investments in colleges and universities, training the personnel, figuring out different hiring strategies, collaborate on, on strategy, collaborate on tools, collaborate on understanding this technology better. I don't think enterprises understand this technology as well as they should now, and they probably won't next year as well. And quite frankly, they're afraid, because if you look at some of the poor moves they made with cloud computing, in the last 15 years that they're going to replicate those same mistakes, which are going to be mistakes with many zeros on the end. And this AI is not only going to allow you to screw things up um, uh, very uh, expensively, um, but it's going to be many times uh, some of the wasted money I think we did and the, and the wasted uh, technical debt that we created around cloud computing. So we have the potential to make huge mistakes here. And I think enterprises understand that and they're rather scared moving forward. However, not moving forward means choosing to fail. I, I think if you don't utilize this technology, you're just going to get into a failure spiral that you're going to be very find very difficult to get out of later when your competitors start moving into the market. So there really is no uh, option here other than to do something. You just have to figure out how to make the right moves. And I think that's what people are concerned about right now. And hopefully this, this show helped you out with that. Well, that's all I have for you this week. Don't forget to uh, look at our stuff on uh, on the Cube Research. Got a lot of great research coming up, a lot of great reports. Uh, spending a lot of time understanding where the industry is going, spending time with the technology providers as well as the enterprises, and trying to provide you with solutions and actionable information where you can make your job a little easier and make the right moves. That's what it's all about. So until next time, you guys stay very safe. Cheers. Bye.